Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Brett with Performance Chiropractic. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, teleseminar on uh, Tuesday, September 15th. Tonight's seminar is called Mind Your Head, and uh, this is a concussion workshop. And what that means, basically, is we're going to go over concussions, what are concussions, what are the things that we need to watch out for, and what are some basic treatments for them. And this is a, a, a particularly hot topic right now with all of the talk the last few years uh, within the NFL and soccer, as well as the new movie that's coming out starting Will Smith. Uh, concussions are definitely in the forefront of people's minds. Frankly, so many people really don't know or understand what a concussion really is. So we're going to get into that. And simply put, a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury, sometimes shortened to the abbreviation MTBI, is a type of injury where a bump, blow, or a jolt to the head or a hit to the body that causes the head and brain to move rapidly back and forth uh, causes the brain to bounce around or twist in the skull, stretching and damaging the brain cells and creating chemical changes in the brain. They're serious but are described as mild brain injuries because concussions aren't usually life-threatening. Even so, the effects of a concussion can be serious. So what causes concussion? Uh, the causes of concussion can vary dramatically, and they usually occur from a blow to the head, but they can also occur, like I already stated, when the upper body is violently shaken. The scariest part of concussions are that they can occur without you even being aware of it. Aside from perhaps some cuts and bruises, there may be no physical evidence of a brain injury whatsoever. A common misconception is that you have to pass out or lose consciousness um, to suffer from a concussion, and, and that's definitely not the case. People vary in how they deal with this trauma. Some may forget what happened right before the event and or pass out, but many others can continue their routine without noticing. Now, rarely concussions can cause serious problems that may require surgery or lead to lifelong problems with movement, speaking, critical thinking, and learning. And there's a small chance of permanent brain damage, so contacting a professional is really essential if you or someone you know is suffering the symptoms of a concussion. Now, common concussions occur to those who play contact sports. You know, of course, we're very familiar with that. And normally, the fluid around our brain acts like a cushion that keeps our brain from banging around in our skull. But if your head or body is hit really hard, then your brain can crash into your skull and be injured. And there are many ways, many other ways to get concussions as well. Some of those causes include fights, falls, playground injuries, car crashes, bike accidents, and, and then, as we said, contact or high-impact sports, uh, such as football, boxing, hockey, basketball, soccer, skiing, snowboarding, etc., so what are the symptoms of, of concussions? Although concussion injuries can be mild and a majority of the people fully recover, the injury still requires time to heal properly. A concussion can, a concussion can last from just hours to months, and the symptoms can be really subtle. Some of these symptoms include a headache or a feeling of pressure in the head, a temporary loss of consciousness, confusion or feeling like you're in a fog, amnesia surrounding the traumatic event, Dizziness or seeing stars or ringing in the ears. Uh, you hear this one a lot, you know, that they saw stars or they just felt like they got their head rung. Nausea, vomiting, slurred speech, delayed response to questions, appearing dazed or fatigued can all be symptoms uh, of a mild concussion. Now, the symptoms of, co of concussions can be immediate or delayed in onset by hours or even days after the injury. So, Following the injury, sometimes you might have problems with or, or the person might have problems with con concentration and memory complaints. They might have irritability or other personality changes. They may have sensitivity to light and noise. They may have slurp sleep disturbances, psychological adjustment problems and depression, or disorders of their taste and smell. Now, there are some other symptoms that can fall into two other categories, and these are emotional and mood changes as well as sleep changes. So the emotional and mood changes might be that they're easily upset or angered. They may have sadness, nervousness, or anxiety, and they may be more emotional. Uh, sleep disturbances mean that they may be sleeping more or less than usual or having a hard time falling asleep. Now, in adults, 
a concussion can go unattended or missed. And sometimes after a concussion, you may feel as if you're not really functioning as well as you did before the injury. This is called post-concussive syndrome. Now, during this period of the concussion, new symptoms may develop. So some of those new symptoms to watch out for would be a loss of consciousness out of in, after any trauma to the head. So you might find that just a light bump to your head, you know, as you're getting in and out of your, in or out of your car, might cause you to actually lose, lose consciousness. Confusion, increasing confusion, headaches or blurry vision, nausea or vomiting, blurred vision, or loss of short-term memory. Uh, that you might not actually remember the actual injury or the event some time before or after the impact. Another sign would be perseverating, and this is repeating the same things over and over again despite being told the answer each time. For example, was I in an accident? Now, changes in your sleep patterns, such as not being able to sleep or sleeping all the time, can be another sign. Changes in your personality, such as becoming angry or anxious for no clear reason. Lack of interest in your usual activities or changes in your sex drive, uh, dizziness, lightheadedness, or unsteadiness, making standing or walking difficult can also be other signs. Now, in children, sometimes those symptoms, even though they're similar, they they might be a little different. Now, head trauma is very common in young children, but concussions can be difficult to recognize in infants and toddlers because they may not be able to describe how they feel. So you have to really pay attention to nonverbal cues uh, of concussion, and some of these might include appearing dazed, being listless and tiring easy, uh, irritability and crankiness, loss of balance and unsteady walking, crying excessively, changes in eating or sleeping patterns, lack of interest in their usual favorite activities, headaches that don't seem to go away, more temper tantrums or sadness, loss of newly acquired skills or loss of balance or trouble walking and or not paying attention. Now, if you look at that list, you know, I know and I understand you know, that some people may have trouble with these because this kind of destri- describes childhood, right? I mean, sometimes, especially if you have a colicky child, um, you know, crying excessively or eating, you know, eating patterns may change. What you need to do is you need to look at from their normal activities, do these have these things changed? Have they made uh, a significant change that that you can definitely see? So once you determine that somebody's had a concussion, you have to be able to deal with that. And there are a few ways that you can treat a mild concussion naturally. If these don't work uh, and concussion symptoms continue, you definitely want to seek medical attention. I'm going to go ahead and outline some of the self-care techniques for mild symptoms of concussion. Uh, these were actually uh, put out uh, by uh, the U- in the UK. Uh, this is off the list from them. Um, the first thing you want to do is apply ice to the head injury to help reduce swelling. Do not apply ice directly to your scalp, as this could damage the skin. Uh, and you, you know, really, when we ice any part of our body, you always want to make sure to protect the skin. Instead, you want to wrap the ice in a washcloth or a towel. It can be a thin towel, like a tea towel or something like that. But you want to make sure that there's something between the ice and your skin. Alternative, alternatively, uh, you can use a bag of frozen vegetables, such as peas or corn, and you want to apply that ice every two to four hours and leave it in place for 20 to 30 minutes. Don't use non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. These type of painkillers, such as ibuprofen or aspirin, can sometimes cause bleeding at the site of injury. And you definitely don't want increased bleeding, especially in the case of of a concussion. Uh, Tylenol would be appropriate in this particular case. It's really the only thing they recommend uh, if you've suffered a concussion. Get plenty of rest and, where possible, avoid stressful situations. These can also aggravate concussions. Avoid drinking any alcohol or taking recreational drugs. And you only want to return to work, college, or school when you feel like you've completely recovered. Only drive a car or ride a bike when you feel like you've completely recovered as well. And especially in the early stages of a concussion, you want to make sure to have someone stay with you for the first 48 hours after the injury in case you experience some of the more serious follow-up symptoms indicating a more serious concussion. Some of those more serious symptoms um, will include some of the following things. And in rare cases, a dangerous collection of blood, and this is called a hematoma, may form in the brain after a bump, blow, or a jolt to the head or body. 
And that collection of blood may actually squeeze the brain against the skull. And if you see any of the following symptoms or you're watching someone who's suffered a concussion and they start exhibiting any of these following signs or symptoms, you really want to call 911 right away or take them to the emergency room quickly. Uh, so you, if they have one or more of these following signs, you definitely want to do that. So if one of their pupils, the little black part of your eye, if one pupil is larger than the other, uh, that's a definite sign of a concussion. If they have drowsiness or inability to wake up, that would be another one. Uh, a headache that gets worse and doesn't go away. Slurred speech, weakness, numbness, or decreased coordination. Those are all signs of, of a more, more uh, dangerous bleed, uh, potentially. Repeated vomiting or nausea, convulsions or seizures, which would be like shaking or twitching. Unusual behavior, or increased confusion, restlessness, or agitation. Loss of consciousness like that they've passed out or been knocked out. Uh, even a brief loss of consciousness should be taken seriously. And for toddlers or infants, if they don't stop crying and they can't be consoled, they won't nurse or eat, these would be serious signs of a concussion. So how do we prevent concussions? Uh, preventing concussions altogether is a bit difficult. It's hard to predict what amount of force will trigger this injury, as everyone is different. You want to make it a point to always wear a well-fitted helmet or ensure that your child is wearing a helmet, appropriate for the sport that you're partaking in. The helmet should fit all the requirements for that particular sport. Now, as a rule of thumb, avoid using the head as a primary focal point of contact. We're talking primarily football or, or hockey right now. In strong contact sports such as football, you definitely want to make sure that they learn proper tackling and leading techniques. Riddell, who's one of the largest football helmet manufacturers, they actually have a great set of videos on their website. And that website is www.riddell.com forward slash education. They have some great videos on on tackling techniques and, and concussions. And they really do a nice job of putting that together. Another place for some really great information is actually through the Centers of Disease Control, so the CDC. Um, I've gotten a lot of information straight off of their website, and you can find their website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.cdc.gov forward slash heads up, H-E-A-D-S-U-P. Uh, and when you go there, there's all kinds of different fact sheets for parents, coaches, uh, adults, um, there's a whole gamut of them. I think there's about six or eight of them. Now, I would be more than happy to send you a copy of any of these links and or fact sheets uh, if you email me at info at myperformancechiropractic.com. Uh, I will be glad to send that to you as long, along with uh, any of the, the uh, sources that you would like um, that I've talked about today. Now, of course, I would be remiss being a chiropractor and talking about how chiropractic care can help concussions. The strengthening of the neck muscle seems to be uh, the key to a lower risk of concussions. Um, because a concussion is a brain injury caused by a direct blow to the head, neck, or face, there's a good chance that the blow has caused a misalignment of the cervical spine. And this is similar to whiplash causing misalignments of the cervical spine as well. A chiropractor can evaluate whether you demonstrate signs of neck injuries commonly associated with concussions and provide you with relief of neck pain and cervicogenic headaches. Now, sports injuries often damage the alignment in the spine, which causes pinched nerves. And pinched nerves cannot communicate properly with the brain and the other parts of the body, nor can the neck function properly if it's misaligned, causing biomechanical changes in how the neck works. Now, chiropractic care will help with alleviating these communication problems, as well as the mechanical issues pre- and post-concussion damage. Now, there is one other bit of information regarding concussions that's really interesting, and and I'm not being sexist here. Uh, there's a website called momsteam.com. It's a great website where uh, parents can get together and talk about children and sports. And there's three quotes on here regarding girls and concussions. And the first one is that girls playing high school soccer suffer concussions 68% more often than boys playing the same sport. They also state that concussion rates in high school basketball are almost three times higher for girls than for boys, and that girls take much longer than boys for concussion symptoms to resolve and return to play. Females are unfortunately more likely to suffer concussion, 
Uh, concussions, as we discussed earlier, are due to a brain injury caused by those direct blows to the head, neck, or face. Therefore, the strength of one neck, one's neck muscles might be the key to preventing concussions. Now, females have smaller heads. One study of collegiate soccer players found that females had 26% less total mass in their head than males. And most of this has to do with stature and, and just plain size. But the bigger issue is that females, on average, pound for pound, tend to have weaker neck and upper body muscles than males, uh, prob probably due to hormonal differences. And therefore, they're going to be more prone to concussions and or because their neck muscles are less developed than boys, they're not as good as boys at as absorbing shock of impact. So that's really important to notice, you know, to, to make note of. So if you have girls that are playing soccer or other sports, um, know that they are going to be more prone to, to concussions. So what does it take to get back to normal after a head injury? The length, length of time that you should wait before resuming your normal daily activities really depends on the severity of the concussion, but be advised that you should only return back to your daily routine of work or school only after you fully recover. So some things to to uh, to remember and to take away from this is that chiropractic care really is ideal for mild injuries, uh, including plenty of rest and not overdoing things when it comes to concussions, and allowing that sufficient time for recovery, as well as you know just making sure that you're doing the things that are necessary to prevent concussion in the first place. Now, you know, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up with just a few things off the CDC fact sheet um, on preventing concussions because some of these things are things that we don't really think about. We think about them when it comes to safety. We don't really think about them when it comes to reducing the chances of concussions. So, you know, make sure that you wear a seatbelt every time you drive or ride in a motor vehicle. Buckle your child in uh, the car using a child safety seat, a booster seat, or a seatbelt uh, according to the child's height, weight, and age. Um, never drive when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. I mean, it seems like it should be needless to say, but but it's important because our chances of accidents certainly goes up, and especially if we have one of those loved ones in the car with us, we want to protect them. We want to wear helmets and make sure that your children wear helmets that are fitted and maintained properly when they're doing anything that's active that could lead to a head injury. So whether that's riding a bike or a motorcycle uh, or a snowmobile, playing contact sports, using inline skates, uh, batting or running bases in ba baseball or softball, horse riding or skiing, all of those different act activities require different types of helmets. Ensure that during athletic games and practices, you and your children are using the right protective equipment, that you're following the safety rules, and they're practicing good sportsmanship. And don't return to play when a known or suspected concussion is around until you've been evaluated and give permi given permission by an appropriate health care provider to return to activity. You also want to make living a areas safer for senior. Pardon me. You want to make living areas safer for seniors. Um, you want to re remove tripping hazards. Use non-slip mats in the bathtubs or shower floors. Use grab using and installing grab bars uh, and handrails on on both sides of the stairways. Improving lighting throughout the home so they can see and they don't step on something or trip. And maintaining a regular exercise program to improve lower body strength and balance. Also, you want to make living areas safer for children. So installing window guards, using safety gates, keeping stairs clear of clutter, and securing rugs and, rugs and using rubber mats and bathtubs, and not allowing children to play on fire escapes or other unsafe platforms. And making sure that uh, the surfaces in your child's playground is made of, made of shock-absorbing materials such as hardwood mulches or sand and is maintained to an appropriate depth. So, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do to prevent concussions. I really want to stress that concussions can be very serious, but uh, but they can definitely be prevented. You just have to kind of know what to watch for. So I really I hope that you gleaned some good information from this talk tonight. Uh, I really enjoyed giving it. Um, we do have another talk coming up September. I'm sorry, coming up November third. Our next talk is going to be on. It's going to be called um, Bang Head Here, and it's going to be a talk on on how to deal with stress in your life. Uh, I kind of timed it to go before the holidays. That can be very stressful for people, but it's certainly going to be appropriate for any time you're dealing with stress in your life. Our next uh, our next uh, event coming up in our office 
is going to be October 16th. We're going to have another ladies' night here. It's going to be called Your Most Beautiful Self. I would love to invite all the women, um, whether they're patients or not in this office, to come and enjoy this night. We had one in May. It was a resounding success. Uh, feel free, if you have any questions or concerns regarding concussions, to email me at info at myperformancechiropractic.com. If you have any questions, feel free to call our office at 913-782-5000. You can find our website at www.myperformancechiropractic.com. All of our upcoming events are at www.docbrett.net. And... Uh, and we are also on Facebook under Performance Chiropractic Olesa. So, again, thank you for listening in. I hope that you enjoyed this talk. I hope that you learned some great information, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great evening, everybody.